In today's video, I'm going to review this talent cell power bank and test it with my go to telescope. Hey, this is the Mad Scientist Guy, and welcome back to the channel. So, I've had my Skywatcher EQ mount for a few months now, and I'm really having a great time. But one of the things that lacks are batteries in order to run it, which is pretty typical for a higher end go-to mount. I mean, as if it were a Star Trekker, then it would just you know, probably have batteries. But, you know, this is a go-to mount that has a little bit higher power requirements. So I've been just running an extension cord and a power supply at home, and it's been working great. But what I'd like to do is I'd like to take this out and travel, and I need a battery bank in order to do that. There are two types of battery canisters available commercially. And I'm going to ignore lead acid because uh, lead is dead. But what we have basically in the lithium category are lithium ion or lithium iron phosphate. And there is a very important distinction between the two. Almost every one of the power banks I've looked at in the lithium ion category contains these 18650 cells. And these are lithium ion cells, and lithium ion is a, has a different voltage range than lithium iron phosphate. So for lithium ion, they call it a nominal of 12 volts, but it's actually more like a maximum. And so what happens is as the cell discharges, it goes down to 9 volts when it's still operational. And this can cause a problem with sensitive equipment. Now here is the discharge curve for lithium iron phosphate which is much more stable in voltage than lithium ion. And as you can see, it ranges from about 13 and a half volts down to around 12 and a little bit lower when it's fully discharged. I mean, fully discharged around 11.5 volts. And so what this means is that you have a much more stable output. And if you're using a Raspberry Pi on an ASA or something like that, I think this is the safer option. I do not know the bottom input voltage that the ESR can take because it just says 12 volts nominally. But I do know that it can run at 11.5 volts because I see it in the chart all the time when it's running. Now the lithium ion version is based on a three cell package. So it's three in series and then put those in parallel. And what that means is that it's going to have a lower overall output voltage in contrast to the lithium iron phosphate. So here's a chart that shows that the, the nominal lithium polymer uh, voltage is going to be approximately 3.4. And so when we do 3.4 times 3, that equals 10.2. So that may be below the requirement for a cutoff voltage. And so it depends on the application that you're using. But I'm not willing to test this on my ASI Air because I don't know the exact uh, cutoff that they have and I need it to run continuously. So that's why I've opted for the lithium iron phosphate chemistry. So with that being said, let's look at the power supply that is used to charge this battery bank with the lithium iron phosphate battery that I purchased. And as you can see, it says it's a 14.6 DC charger and that is specific to lithium iron phosphate and it needs to be 14.6 because that is the cutoff voltage and that is different than lithium ion. So if you were to plug in a standard 12 volt power supply into the input source for this battery, it would not charge it all the way. It would only charge it partially because we need to go up to 14.6 volts and you need to understand that uh, when you're charging it and make sure you have the correct adapter Let's take a look at what you get when you order this product. So here's our battery pack and here's the charger. And as I mentioned before, this is the 14.6 and we have a male plug. This is a nine volt with male on both ends. And that's going to go into the nine volt slot right there. And then this is really handy and I'm glad that they included this because we have a splitter for the 12 volt. And here's why it's so cool. <clears throat> you can put the uh, mail into your charger. And then you can charge it if you want to without disconnecting anything. And then you have a mail output here. 
Now, the only thing I wish is I wish they would have made this a female, but if you have the right cable like this, so this came with the ASI Air, I can just simply plug in and now I can go directly with a very long cord up to my ASI Air. So if you don't have one of these, I'll put a link where you can get it and this is pretty handy. And if I can find one that goes to a female on one and a male on the other, that would be the most intuitive for me because then you could just take any cord that you normally have, which is a male on both ends, and plug it in. But see here it won't work. So there's probably an adapter, but the folks at ASA are already thought of this and so I already have the cable. So that is really handy for me and for you because then you can either charge or not charge without even unplugging anything from your telescope. So I really like that feature. The kit also includes a 12 volt cigarette lighter adapter. Now let's check some voltages. Um, I had the power switch on. I have not charged it. It's just how they shipped it. And then we can look at the uh, 12 volt and that's reading 13.1. And let's take a look at the 9 volt. And that's reading 9.2. Now it also has a USB output. This is 5 volt and I've already tested it and it works fine for uh, an old iPod that I was needed charging. Now for charging, this is uh, really simple. Either with or without this splitter, it doesn't matter. But I'm just... If you notice up here we got green which means that it's not charging. So when we plug this in, we get a red light, and that means it's charging. And so you just leave it plugged in until it turns green and you have a fully charged battery. Now in the directions, they say that you have to have this in the um, on position, but I found that it charges just fine in the off position. So I'm not quite sure why they said that, but clearly this is charging. And so it works for me in both directions. And so that's just fine. I got nothing but rain right now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna test this in the middle of the day here in my garage. Sorry for the mess, but I didn't have a lot of room. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to uh, slew someplace and turn on tracking just so that I can get this to uh, have a little bit of a load and I'm just going to run it for a few hours and just make sure that it works okay so I, I just went ahead and used the splitter that I showed you a few minutes ago okay so we've got our uh, power indicating light so the AS Air is up here powering it and then I'm going to get my phone out and start slewing and then we'll just let it run for a while. I'm doing this test on a, a pretty cold day and that's a good simulation for how it'd be at night. It's about 50. That's a good test to see how this will perform when it's cold. So let me go get my phone and I'll do some slewing. All right, so tracking is off at the moment. And what I want to do is I want to Increase that rate a little bit. And then just turn tracking on. It doesn't have to actually be pointing anything, but this will give us a good idea of, you know, its ability to do what I do most, which is imaging. And so let's look at the power. So right now we are about an amp, about 11.8 to 12 watts. And so that's typically what I see a lot. And that's running a filter wheel and two cameras. And so I'm going to be adding a dew heater later, but we can do that test some other day. So let's just run this for a few hours and see how it works. Okay, the forecast calls for partly cloudy, so I've got a little break here. So I decided to recharge that battery and start over at night.
Okay, I'm slewing with this uh, Newtonian on here. It's quite a bit heavier than my lens. And this has been running for a couple of hours. I got a little break in the weather and I'm still at five bars and the voltage is around 12. And so it's working just fine, even with this, uh, this bigger Newtonian. So one, that's the Celestron 127EQ on there with the guide camera. So anyway, it's performing very well. No complaints. So one last thing before I sign off here. If you want to calculate your estimated runtime, in this case take 6.5, which is the capacity in amp hours, and divide that by your average running amps. So in my case at 1.1, this is going to give me uh, about 6 hours of runtime to take it to zero. And so for traveling situation, that works great for me. So if you need a second battery, you can just run these in parallel or just plug them into different devices. So I hope you found that helpful, and I will see you next time.